you guys are probably wondering, so I came to this video for you guys to talk to me about Hawaii. Why are we talking about Dallas? Why are we talking about LA? So let me give you a heads up. We live in the East Coast, right? And when you're going from the East Coast to go to somewhere like Hawaii, it's a six hour time difference. Mm -hmm. That is huge, right? Mm -hmm. Think of it like this. Right now it's about 11, 12 o'clock where we're at, right? Yeah. In Hawaii, it's 6 a.m. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, if you decide that you want to do the straight flight, nine hours, go ahead and do it. Be my guest, right? We were like, okay, we need like a chaser. Yeah, because <laughs> I work nights yeah. and he works in the morning. So yeah. if we went straight there, it would've been rough. we would have had no experience. We would have been in the hotel sleep. The whole time. Whole time. So what we decided to do is we flew into LA first. Never been there, right? Three hour time difference change for us. And we actually got to see a lot of cool stuff. So you want to talk to them a little bit about what we saw in LA? Yeah, so when we got to LA, we saw a lot of very different, interesting things. Because it's like it's the West Coast. I've never been to the West Coast before. He's never been. So was, have you been? Yeah, I've been. Well, I like ain't LA? been to Cali. I haven't been to Cali. Okay. He hasn't been to Cali. I haven't been to Cali. So it was a different culture over there. So he told me, you're in charge of setting things up for LA. And I was like, okay, cool. So one thing that I definitely wanted to do was go to the Warner Brothers studio. Yeah. So I booked our tickets because I booked it on purpose the day we got there. So when we got to LA, it was like 8.30, 9 in the morning. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're going to take a nap at the hotel for a bit. And then we're going to go on this tour at 3.30. We got to the hotel. The hotel was very beautiful, right next to the Staples Center. JW Marriott. If you go in LA Live, it's like literally right next to the Staples Center, like you said. Beautiful hotel. Basically gives you all the amenities of the Ritz Carlton without being in a Ritz Carlton. Beautiful so. hotel, beautiful hotel. Yep. And their breakfast, because we're going to talk about that in a second. Oh, their breakfast was good. And I'm not a breakfast person. I am. He is. I love it. But their yeah. breakfast was so, so good. But among other things, the Warner Brothers Studio. I was like, okay, I'm gonna book it for 3.30. That gives us time to take a nap. We took a nap. And mind you, the time difference, because like he said, the time difference is something you will never experience before. Yeah. We took a nap. Woke up late as hell. Woke up late. <laughs> I am looking crazy because I'm like, did we oversleep? Like I'm trying to find my phone and tap the time. And the phone was like one o'clock. And mind you, the Warner Brothers Studios is 30 minutes away from our hotel. And I hear all these rumors about LA traffic and I got scared. Yeah. I was like, we're gonna miss this tour. Yeah. So scrambling to get ready. They were very flexible. Very so that's flexible. one of the cool things about them. They want people to come and experience them. So like they're very flexible. I think they gave you like, okay, if you miss this slot, you got another slot, but we're good to go. Yeah. Now, I do feel like this is based off of like depressed tourism due to COVID. So if this isn't COVID time and you know everything's open, I would highly advise you to get there early. You know what I'm saying? So you can kind of enjoy the store, walk around a little bit, all this stuff. But um, if you like are not able to do that and not able to get there early, just make sure you get there on time. So that way you're not yeah. in a situation where you miss out on your tour. Exactly, and that was my biggest fear because that's one thing that I wanted to experience there. So what do you want to see? Point so to we're in the Warner Brothers studio. Mm -hmm. We just got off of the tour of the different lots where they shot movies and all that. Now we're in the cafe, Friendsville. So shout out to Regina. So right now we're in the scripting department. It's pretty cool. Just mercy. Michael B. Jordan, just mercy. Yeah. Selena. Mm. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. One of my favorites right here. Godzilla vs. Kong. A recent classic. Yes, yes, yes. One of my favorites. The little girl. Yeah, I know. Well, Batman begins. What is that one? Right there. Oh, yeah, that's the old one. Mm -hmm. Nice. You got Aquaman right here. Yes, 
She loves this one right here. Juice and Black Messiah. You, yes. Love Judas and the Black Messiah. Yeah. Shazam. I want to be a DC fan. I like myself. Yeah. Oh, you know, I love that show. This is one of my absolute favorites. Crazy. I got you. I got you. Oh, yeah. I got you. I got you. This is a great one. This is one of the classic. Uh, um, this one. <laughs> <laughs> you said three hundred is a classic. Absolutely. Three hundred is a classic. This actually. guy right here has made this place so much money and they treated him so wrong. If you know, you know. Oh, snap. So, if you know, you know. I love Shameless too. It wasn't for really? I love Shameless. You craft that it doesn't require you spend any money to do it. You sit and you provide yourself with the time to actually write. Because it's a repetition. So this is pretty much like the writer's room. Uh, jokes that I always kind of tweak my own children with because they don't want to re you know, they go, oh, I got it. They go, oh, you rewrite my paper. I'm like, oh, just once? Are you kidding? I've done screenplays where I've literally done 17 and 18 rewrites before there was somebody said that they were ready to make the film. It's hard. You've got to learn it. And you wouldn't expect anything else that you could do to prove the real craft. You would not expect to be able to do it if you Yeah, can. story you boy. Some Something this is probably one of my favorite movies from the Matrix. The Matrix, all of these are from the Matrix. It's like I've never storyboarding has always been a tedious process and for me. You can kind of see how it was created. Yeah, this movie was absolutely fantastic. It's so good. It's crazy to see this storyboard. It's one of my favorite movies. This is pretty cool, dude. Kind of like yeah, picking your cast. This is cool. Leonardo DiCaprio. When they started. Look on that one. Small the dragon. You just sort of dive in. Now, the danger is that you start without knowing where you're going. I don't know if he did small. That's a process. I make a lot of notes. I talk to a lot of people. Wow. I have a number of notes to myself. And just begin it. The biggest challenge is just finding the time to write. So, for me, it's a lot of home. And on the weekends, people who are executive producing shows, senior writers on television, are getting anywhere from 60 to 90. And then you got the casting call. Mm -hmm. While you add this, when you put your headshots in, after you've done your, uh, your uh, audition, that holds you up on the boards like this. You see how the of the White House now. CIA. What are the about how inspired you feel. I feel very inspired because you know working in news can be very discouraging. But it's like working in TV or film can also be discouraging as well because it's like this. All these scripts that probably did not make it yeah. ended in the bin. You hear what the guy was saying on the TV? He was talking about when he was writing, you know, screenwriting for his kids. He said they were upset when he had to rewrite it once. He's like, you kidding me? I have written like 17 scripts before yeah. I was writing. And, and it's like, like you got to think about all this time yeah. to make all these scripts all these movies probably ended straight in the trash. Exactly. And it's like one only made it through. Exactly. And it's like a lot of these people who made this stuff, they weren't paid. They weren't under a contract. Freelance. Yeah, virus. freelance. That's crazy. Emphasis on free. Jesus. Emphasis on free. Jesus. So it's like, that's something to think about, you know? And when you're in your 20s, you're saying like, oh, wow, life is hard. We're in our 20s. 
all we're getting is a bunch of no's and people saying our work's not good enough or we need to do more and people are really hard on us but hearing the stories of the writers they're like oh no that's not just in your 20s i am 40 years old with three kids and i just stayed up for two weeks straight writing this script for it to get thrown in the trash for it to get thrown in the trash in my face yeah. so it's like it was really inspiring that if you don't love this then it's gonna be hard it's gonna be challenging but for that man to keep going is because he loves it and it was really inspiring to me and it was really cool That's dope. i'm a writer and i write and i'm proud to do it it's the most difficult part of my job that i do my name is john wells i started at warner brothers on june 1st 1986 on a relatively forgettable show called shell game for cbs but i've been an executive producer writer and director on a number of shows er West Wing, Southland, Shameless, and Animal Kingdom is a new show we're doing for TNT. All of the other things I do I greatly enjoy, but the writing is the thing that, uh, that I find most challenging and most rewarding. And I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do any of the other things that I get to do if I didn't write. This is pretty much what he met Lady Gaga's character. At the gay bar. Okay. Yeah, that's when he realized that she could sing. Sing, sing. See over there, they got a bunch of other stuff. Some crazy rich Asians, I remember this. Oh, yes. Oh my god, remember the wedding scene? Yes, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That to me, that is scene. the best wedding scene ever. Crazy rich Asians, best wedding scene. I'm too broke to afford that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all know right now. She never like that. I remember this. An LA crazy friend of hers. Yeah. Yeah. When you start a, a film, so. the first part of the process is that you read the screenplay. And as you read the screenplay, you sort of visualize the people, oh, yeah. like who they are, where they come from. I'm Colleen Atwood, and I'm a costume designer. It's from Batman, the cow from Batman. This is the original from Batman.